Will and Ben, who are coming to talk to us um, about diamond ranking and kaleidoscope eyes, engaging stakeholders to tune into our VLE review. So I'm going to hand over to them. Thank you. Uh, where should we look, Ben? I, I think this work. works. So we haven't yeah. tried this out yet. So, oops, sorry. We'll start there. We're there. Yep. There we go. Okay, so uh, my name's Will Moindro and... Uh, ben McGray. Um, yep. We're both educational developers within the University of Liverpool. So our presentation is going to be about a post-implementation VLE review we conducted at the university um, and the techniques and approaches we use to engage stakeholders with obviously the backdrop of the pandemic going on in the background, giving us a very unique context to engage with, uh, with our staff and students around the VLE. Um, so we're going to just give you a bit of a background to what we did. It might be of interest to other people considering this, uh, but we'll kind of start off from there. So um, just to begin with, just a bit of a kind of size up the audience a little bit and find out if we're all in the same uh, experience. For the people in the room, would you like to put your hand up if you've been involved in VLE review before? Okay, so for people online, it looks probably about 30, 40 yeah, percent. Yeah, more than one VLE review. Yeah, like 10 percent. And of interest here, did your VLE review end up in changing supplier? Ah, uh, so. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think it dwindles down, yeah, yeah, it dwindles down quite a bit. That's quite interesting, actually, because we thought that they always change supplier, but actually we've come across cases recently, haven't we, Ben? Which is where, really interesting, yeah, we've yeah. got stock or upgraded. The upgraded, system. yeah. So that's quite interesting. Um, and has anyone ever undertaken an evaluation of your VLE outside of the contract renewal period? Yeah, so for the fun of it. Yeah, okay, great. All right, next up then. So we've got a timeline here of where our review started and, and ended, and obviously we're going to focus on the actual um, the, the review that we did. But just for context, we started in 2018 to actually review what we had, which was Blackboard Learn at the time, and then um, we decided to shortlist between uh, Blackboard and Canvas. So um, what we did is we went through a sort of staged approach in terms of ad adoption during um, when COVID hit in, in 2019. Certain people opted in, and then we moved all the first year courses into Canvas, and then we went for full implementation by uh, September 2021. Like I said, we're going to focus on the actual review. So just the standout features, what came out of our implementation, as well as having a new VLE and all the features that came on it, we also were able to enable some of these extra features, such as Tier 1 support, which Canvas offers, Canvas Studio, which is like a video platform, as well as Panopto, Ally to help with accessibility, now that people could do a review of that, um, and all those other tools as well. I won't go into more detail. But the, the nice thing was that novel approach, bit of that slide where we had an advisory group that was set up. There was a project team that worked on moving over from Blackboard Learn to uh, Canvas, but the advisory group made up of different people around the university, so people like yourselves who maybe are based in different departments or faculties. We had senior leaders in that group, and we were able to meet every so we many weeks and actually approve some of these technologies or run trials, etc. We also had Canvas coaches. I'll go into more detail about them. That was how we were able to engage with students, get students to work as partners. And a Canvas Connect, which Will was quite a big part of, was a, an online community of practice. I'm sure most of you established something like that during COVID, where you got people to, to share practice yeah. and ideas, which was really useful for that peer-to-peer -peer, um, sort of feedback of using Canvas. So the Canvas coach role, we just want to give you a bit of context on this. We're not going to focus too much on it, but these were student interns who were hired on grade two contracts. They were given 10 hours a week to, um, basically it was to do the sort of day-to-day -day making sure everyone was moved over to the new system, help people transfer materials over, and the assessment was moved over to the new system, um, cold call on any staff who maybe hadn't even touched the new VLE yet. But it did sort of expand a little bit more as it went on. We were sort of surprised in terms of they became more of like a sort of student support that we could rely on, which we'll go into when we talk about our survey. And just to let you know, it grew into 20 coaches during like the, sort of the full implementation. And now we have six uh, coaches now working on a grade three contract just due to the nature of the work's gone a bit more um, into that grade as well. So 
Yeah, they were, they were pivotal in our actual evaluation as well, which we'll come on to a little bit later on. But back to our story, why evaluate now? And that was the response that we received when we contacted our uh, friends and other institutions. They're like, why would you bother doing an evaluation when you're not even, you've only just moved to Canvas, why would you evaluate it? But um, the powers that be decided that we need to evaluate it to decide, you know, were we making effective use of it? Um, and also to direct where we were going to spend the next couple of years of bedding in the technology a bit more. So the original aims of the new VLE or the VLE review was to find a VLE to meet our teaching and learning needs and to drive and support development of excellent pedagogy. So obviously our first question is, what do they mean by excellent pedagogy? And I think everybody would say that's kind of the, in the eyes of the beholder, really, isn't it? Um, so our step one really was to engage with the, um, the stakeholders. But yeah, should we move on to the next slide? But obviously 2020... Uh, the challenges it presented us when we actually started this evaluation was how do we actually engage with people. Uh, people's needs of the VLE are drastically different from what they were in 2019 or 2018 when we carried out the VLE review. Um, and also how to actually engage with people when they're distributed, um, not on campus anymore, etc. You know, that was a challenge for us when we're used to engaging with people face to face. So we're going to go through a number of uh, approaches that we use that we'd like to highlight to other people. Step one, uh, logic mapping. So this was an exercise we did with people, with stakeholder groups, uh, different groups that we come together and meet via Microsoft Teams and go for a mural, mural, sorry, um, document together, like an online space, and map out the basically what each stakeholder group thought of the evaluation, what should they felt should be the short, medium and long-term aims of the evaluation, or how they would like to see our use of Canvas um, span out over those time periods. And that was a really nice exercise to do with students. We also did it with lecturers and our um, SLT, the people who gave us the work. They didn't know, but we were going to get them to do some work as well by going through this process. Um, and that really helped us to develop kind of the metrics they were looking for and the types of questions that we would then put within the kind of the research instruments we were going to use. But that was really nice. Fantastic for us as, as learning technologists to hear people articulate how they see Avili as well. Um, step two. So, yeah, um, we did surveys, obviously, with uh, both staff and students. The staff survey we were able to control using uh, Bristol Online Survey, so we both got accounts. We were able to build the questions based on that exercise Will was talking about um, and come up with questions. Basically, it was a mixture of like it style questions. We went between one and five and then some open-ended questions so we could do like a thematic analysis at the end. Um, obviously, we could monitor the data, which is quite nice. So if we knew, um, based on some of the questions about demographic, if there were certain staff who maybe weren't responding from like um, a certain faculty, we could just look at the data and go, okay, we need to like speak to someone who's at the head of that faculty or someone who's involved in that school and uh, get some more feedback from there. The student survey was done through central comms. Now, this had a challenge in that we had to adhere to the university sort of comm schedule. So we had all our questions ready in, and were designed with um, our Canvas coaches by, I'd say about January or February at the start of the year, but we couldn't launch it until after Easter just because of like NSS surveys, end of term stuff. Um, it was a bit of a challenge trying to get it out there, but the key thing was that we could go through their central marketing comms, so like the guilds, channels, um, you know, on Canvas courses, whatever. Um, as well as doing the survey, we launched it in the guilds. We had like a prize draw for people to complete it, so we had vouchers. I think they were £50 Amazon vouchers after like five who'd done it, like as a random draw. Um, and I think as well, when they came to the launch events, which we ran in the guild, we bought a load of um, cacti and succulents. That seemed to get people um, to the table, probably like the vendors are doing outside, mm -hmm. giving us goodies. Uh, we got people to come to that. Um, and it was quite nice as well as we could ask them to follow through um, and, and join us for a focus group, which again, we'll go into more detail um, in a bit. I'll just talk about the surveys just in more detail. These are the sorts of um, comments and themes that came out of um, the sort of staff survey exercise. So we didn't obviously want to compile all the questions for you, but there weren't any surprises when we were looking at this, obviously around the effectiveness of the VLE, the course design, you know, how, how things were laid out, staff wanted to know about, um, the assessment side of things, you know, what engine to use. We had Cam uh, Turnitin and Canvas as own at the same time. And people wanted to know about things like Learn Analytics, the use of Ally, um, are all fed into our senior leadership mm. team where we could mm. sort of come up with like goals of how we could use the VLE long term. Well, I should have said on that last slide as well, the responses are there in the top bottom right hand corner. So we had 311 staff who completed that one. 
With the student one, it was more um, engaging with 1,447, so we were quite happy with that uh, number. These were the sort of uh, questions and themes that came from the student survey. Again, these were built in, in sort of partnership with the Canvas coaches. So um, we were quite interested in things like online versus face-to-face -face because of COVID. Accessibility came out quite strong from students as well. Um, anything about templating because we didn't enforce a baseline. Um, when we moved to VLE, so that was quite interesting as well. And if people were using some of those third party apps like the Tier 1, uh, the mobile app, etc. So, um, just to talk about the focus group, and this is where the diamond ranking comes in, I'll, I'll start off with this one. The focus groups, like I said, were uh, students picked after they completed the survey. There was like a section where they could opt in, and then we contacted people. Because again, it was sort of people were on campus and off campus who ran these offline as well as face to face. But we did six. It was around May time of 2021, and um, we recruited students, uh, like I said, through the survey. It was using this structure that we're going to go into more detail called the diamond ranking. We were asking around, how could we get students to actually give their opinion? What can make it more interesting? And that's how we did it. And uh, we used the Canvas coaches to come up with the design, the statements, which uh, Will will talk about now in the activity. Yeah, like Ben said, we, we got an idea from a law, one of our law lecturers who were using this approach, um, Diamond Ranking, to explore with students their perceptions of group work um, on the course. So it really seemed really good. I've got a, a kind of a screenshot there, but the idea is that you use this as an activity within your focus group. Um, it's very amenable to being delivered online. You maybe have one facilitator who's controlling a PowerPoint online slide to move statements around the screen uh, within a diamond pattern for most significant to least significant at the bottom. So our statements were actually kind of pump prime from the survey. Things that students had said in the free text comments, things like uh, the VLE will allow me to engage with my peers or has a good mobile app. Um, is easy to navigate, things like that. And we, we kind of got the students to, to, to agree amongst themselves the ordering of them. And it was really interesting to see, you know, the students were able to qualify their thinking, talking to other students, maybe from a different discipline area. It was very, very interesting. It was all recorded, lots of data. Um, and then two statements were left blank where students could actually create their own statement, something that they felt hadn't been included. So really lovely activity, um, generates lots of discussion. And um, I really highly recommend that to anyone considering doing evaluation um, with, with students. That was the power, I think, was the discussion around this exercise. We weren't really too concerned about where students placed those statements. So there's a question at the top, I think, that says, what is important to your learning resources or something on that line? And um, like it says on the slide, mm. we could edit those as we were mm. going along, depending on it the was, background of the students. Yeah, and and we did a pilot run with the Canvas coaches, the students who were helping us with this. And in fact, you know, they helped on the design of it. But it was really interesting to be able to sort of classify different participants based upon their role. So the Canvas coaches kind of could view behind the curtain a little bit and they had slightly different responses from other students. So again, it was, it was very interesting. And we've got a little bit of a summary of our findings coming up now. Um, the findings fed into, uh, well, we have to do a project closure report. We haven't fully communicated the findings to staff and students yet. There's a hell of a lot we can still need to do with it, but we are planning to. Um, and also, when we engage with lecturers in our training for Canvas, our VLE, we can highlight approaches that students fed back positively about, you know, particularly around structuring content, for example. Um, the, the, yeah, the perceptions, I won't go too much into this because we kind of wanted to talk about how we viewed things for other people's eyes and um, got them to uh, talk about that. But yeah, high reliability, which is fantastic for us, feeling supported, et cetera, et cetera. It's really good. Um, next slide. And... Um, I guess another surprising thing that really fed back into how we support staff is that 80, well, we found 83% of the students surveyed use the mobile app for Canvas. I don't think anybody used the Blackboard app because there just wasn't anything in it particularly yeah, before. Just to look at resources, really. Yeah. There wasn't really much you but could it's, do it. it's, it's high, high take up here. So that really has an implication about how we design courses. Also, a conversation started here about whether they prefer individuality or consistency. So students seem to prefer a mixture of both. We still have um, that debate now, aren't we, really? Is yeah. so certain schools and departments took on like a template that they cascade to other. Uh, modules yeah. on that sort of program yeah. but um, like you see there the students like the fact that there's consistency but we've got staff who like to have their individuality yeah. to yeah. do something a bit more funky or a bit more uh, interesting yep. with like pages anyway. 
Um, so student's opinion then, um, these are sort of the sort of general comments or the general uh, sort of stuff that came back, which was that they did like the fact that you could offer more um, personalization within Canvas, that there were study management tools like a to-do list in their calendar, um, and they wanted, they've seen a lot of apps obviously during the lockdown as, as well as in further education where they wanted to have everything all in one place like timetabling, library hours, keeping track on this sort of work. So. They were very um, sort of complimentary on that canvas. Um, what they liked to see in terms of what they saw an effective use of the VLE were those in bold there. So they liked to see a variation of approach in assessments and not just uploading um, documents into like a, a tenant in repository or something like that. They wanted to see more peer assessment or more presentation style or video. Um, they want to see more mobile friendly in the design of a course. So obviously a lot of staff will work obviously off a PC or laptop. Uh, they want to make sure things are in the right places. People were complaining, or students, that they were going on one course and the, the sort of module information was in one area and then it was in a different area in another course. Um, and students were interested if staff were actually being trained, mandatory. And we did offer training, but it was never mandatory, yeah, even as we moved over, mandatory. it was optional for them to come. So that's why we were still having that discussion on that last bullet point of whether we need to have a standardised approach or whether we um, encourage individual approaches mm -hmm. to uh, Canvas still. I mean, our own reflections as, as learning technologists coming into it, I mean, I guess we had kind of higher hopes or expectations that Canvas was a place of rich peer-to-peer -peer dialogue and collaborative learning, et cetera, et cetera. But in actual fact, the students we sampled, maybe we sampled the wrong students then. Possibly. But they fed back, actually, they just wanted it to work. You know, this was mid-pandemic, so that's kind of when we fed back to our mentors, they kind of said, well, we, you know, bear in mind we're halfway through a pandemic, all the stress of that, and, you know, and we also had Blackboard before as well, which was quite out of date, and it was quite bloated with all the integrations that our own university put into it. Um, so they were just thankful that things were reliable, cloud-based and reliable, so that, that was interesting. Um, reliability came up an awful lot, and, you know, I suppose in a way that underpins the innovation you know once you've got something reliable then the innovation might not be through the VLE it might be something you can do on class because it frees up your time to be able to do the more exciting stuff face to face in your valuable time when you know that all the, the VLE is taking care of all the admin for example um, but I think it's also it just shows that we really have to work with lecturers to see the value of that because we entered our job roles when discussion boards were probably a big thing, you know, and, and things have moved on a long way. We use Microsoft Teams. We're a very strong institution using Microsoft Teams for collaborative uh, project work. Um, so, you know, that's, that's also something that, that, that takes a lot of the strain in those areas. But I, that's something we're still thinking about a little bit, yeah. Yeah, some students aren't aware, like that peer-to-peer -peer bullet point that's on there. Some of them weren't aware of some of the tools that we integrated, mm. like there's a tool called Buddy Check. I don't know if any of you've used that, but it's a nice tool to allow students to give um, each other in a group anonymous feedback, either through like a Likert scale type question or a survey. And um, when students heard about that, they were like, oh, I wouldn't mind my lecturer trying yeah. that or, you know, during the presentation yeah. or something like that. So maybe we need to do better in our role and sort of showcasing these case studies and making it highlight yeah. it so more we, people. We need a bit of work. I mean, just lately, students have been feeding about, they generally find group work to be quite a risky exercise, particularly towards the final years where they think it might count against them. So, um. I'm putting that list like a TV. I don't know what yeah. so. Uh, recommendations then, so we thought this might be a nice slide if any of you are about to undergo uh, VLE or anything that we got out of it. So uh, first point there, just working with target group stakeholders on the research design. So that exercise uh, Will talked about with the mural boards was really beneficial. Um, we started with blank mural boards, didn't we, of each group as well. Mm -hmm. So we could target all the different people who make use of the VLE or support students who went to meet the librarians mm -hmm. one week. We'd go and meet mm -hmm. um, the head of know, science and engineering and talk to them mm -hmm. and we'd see the patterns where things would be really, higher yeah. or low. So and it so really yeah. sort of um, got those people to invest in the evaluation as well because the lecturers who engaged with that saw their own questions actually became part of the survey, they were much more likely to then promote the survey to their colleagues as well if they were kind of invested in it. We could also pilot 
our um, focus groups or survey with them as well. Yeah. And as that saying, was it too many cooks in the kitchen in terms of like when you're designing a survey or designing some kind of feedback form, so many people can have their say and push certain questions mm -hmm. to the agenda. But like Will said, if you get their buy-in for this, it makes it easier to get it yeah, signed definitely. off by senior uh, yeah, leadership. Yeah, true. Uh, research ethics, oh, that was a pain, wasn't it, trying to get that done? It's so. useful to get it under our belts. One thing, it got mine and Ben's name attached to the, to the work as well. Um, but having that was, was a, a great safety thing for students filling the, the survey as well, that we could give them the, the participant information sheets, etc. And also then you can present it externally like this, the data more easily as well. Yeah, what did minutes. it take us to do it? About two Ooh. months, three months? Well, it didn't take long to do the application, no. but to, to get a response back and actually pull our finger out to do it initially, probably about two or three yeah. months, yeah. And the, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, establish that student partnership in the design process. That goes back to the coaches. Uh, again, we used uh, mural boards, got them to work through teams, uh, design some of the questions pass it on to them, get them to try it out. It was just really handy. So if you do have students yeah. who can work as interns or like that, that'd be really useful. Um, and consider structure activity like the diamond ranking. Um, we can happily share how we went about it, how we designed it. Because originally, like Will said, we spoke to a lecturer in uh, marketing, wasn't it? Or, or, or can't remember. Yeah. But, um, it, she was doing it to find out feedback on um, how people were using, I think it was just mobile apps just for the work. So we had to adapt it, obviously, for the VLE. So we found it mm. useful for, for moving it from a marketing perspective to something yeah. that was like a, yeah. a VLE review. But that was definitely having an activity to lead on the focus groups because I've been in quite a lot of focus groups where you have people who are quite vocal and they tend to talk over the other people, whereas this actually gives them something to focus on a little bit yeah. and bring everybody into the conversation. I think that's probably our... So, um, yeah, please feel free to get in contact with if, if you'd like to follow up or, or use any of these things that we showed you. Um, that'd be, you know, very welcome to do that. We'd be interested to hear if anyone else uh, uses these approaches in the future. Yeah, um, we're around for till Thursday, so yeah, happy yeah. to answer any questions on this today and uh, any time after. Great, thank you. Good. Thanks. Thank you very much. It sounds like you've been incredibly busy. I think that's probably an understatement. Um, <laughs> a lot of work gone on there, and it's really interesting to hear it. Um, and we have had quite a lot of things come through, actually. Um, and I think, as you can see on the screen, we've, we've got quite a few likes for that first question there. Um, what were the biggest differences or conflicts between staff and uh, student and staff priorities? I don't think, I think they were quite unified really. Yeah. I think they both wanted the easy to use system. It, goes it was back, reliable. It goes back to the reliability, doesn't it? Yeah. They both, that was the common theme that sort of stood out. The difference, I suppose, maybe staff maybe had higher expectations on what they wanted to see from the VLE in terms of um, course design, um, the third party apps like Ally Accessibility. We didn't really get too many students interested in that to begin with. Um, but yeah, it seems to be, they, they, they weren't too dissimilar. It's quite surprising that they were quite similar when we asked. Quite unified in that, yeah. Yeah. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because you do sort of think, oh, it might be that they are very different, but really we're all human underneath everything, aren't we? So there's, mm. there's a lot of things that tie us together. Yeah. Um, and uh, looking, uh, I know that there's there's a couple of different things on here, and one that sort of stood out to me. Um, did you consider areas of social justice and themes of inclusivity, decolonisation, and how this is addressed through design of the VLE? Mm. And good luck answering the question. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. We did consider decol, didn't we? Um, to begin with, yeah. What, how do we how do we address that? Or do we have a question about that? Specifically? We might have had a question in the survey, not specifically around uh, decolonisation, but inclusivity. We did especially around mm. accessibility but not really around race or I can't remember. gender I thought we might have done. Um, we need to look for our data set again yeah <laughs> it is something we're picking up now um, because now what we've done is we've got the report we've submitted that there is a list of recommendations based on um, sort of thematic analysis of the open end stuff mm. and that came up as something that students would like to see improved uh, with the use of VLE so it's something we're working on because the advisory group still exists at mm. Liverpool mm. Um, so it's something we'll pick up but yeah that's Unfortunately, can't really answer that one. Yeah, no, I think it's an area that we're all um, yeah. striving to, and I think um, mm. you'll probably find at the at the conference there's a lot of people who will be having these conversations, so mm. we can all learn to yeah, definitely. Yeah. about it and to talk more about it. I think uh, just coming back to it now, actually, I think we had a question around like equipment and um, 
you know, what sort of equipment students were bringing. I think that's, that uh, sort of feed into mm, the social mm. justice, you know, where mm. students well equipped to use a VLE before coming to the university. Mm, but mm. yeah, sorry, that's just come to my mind then. So I might have addressed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the next sort of uh, one that we've got the most likes on, um, did you use any change management methodologies? Well, we don't know much about that, do we? Yeah, um, we, we were in the project team, but we weren't project managers yeah. on it. So, uh, we had a strategic change department. You actually seconded for a time there, Ben, and I was for the evaluation. Yeah, so for two years it. I broke away from the Centre for Innovation and Education and joined that team, but mm. um, I was just working, they called it faculty education coordinator, so it was just to go out, mm. speak to staff, make sure people were engaging in the VLE review process and mm. move over. But yeah, we had um, two project managers at the time, Tricia and a guy called Andy, but they'll probably be able to answer that question better than I can. Yeah. They, they came up with the methodology it for It wasn't us. really owned from from a our team it was more of a strategic change project which it did have the APVD for education ever seeing it but um, yeah. but it was kind of an IT project yeah, yeah. lots of different stakeholders yeah. as uh, I'm yeah. sure we're yeah, yeah, all yeah. familiar with um, there's yeah there's quite a lot of questions coming in as we've as we've had before um, so uh, I can see as, as we as we're looking the yeah, next this, one on there the second one down about this survey I mean the I mean, anyone who's done anything like qualitative data, you get end up with too much data, don't you? And we're probably not really equipped to be able to handle all that data mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a quick time frame. Uh, but it's something we'll probably look look for look towards in the future. We did carry out. We actually hired a student to do a thematic analysis. She was really good, yeah. Of of just the survey data, but we haven't really looked at the focus group data too much yet, which I think will be another rich data source. Yeah, what's happened at Liverpool is that the advisor group still exists, but they've created free working groups. There's one around um, accessibility, innovation and student staff training, and they're working off the recommendations of the Canvas report to improve those three areas. Mm. So that's a fair step, but there's a lot more, like Will said, and a lot more data that mm. we need to work through and actually yeah. um, react to, don't we? So yeah. Um, yeah, there's plenty more that we need to do. But it is certainly driving things around um, staff training, where we direct our focus, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question at the top there, which was something I was considering as well. So you started the review in 2018 and migration in 21. How much did the pandemic affect the length of this project, i.e. could it have been done quicker without the pandemic in the middle? And it's something just to sort of caveat onto that um, that I was thinking about was I wondered how sort of focus uh, may have shifted as you were having these calls within teams rather than maybe something that would have been in person, would that have affected um, how things were done? I think strangely enough, even though it seems a, long, a few years there, it actually accelerated the fact that people moved over to Canvas and we got it done. I think if we didn't have the pandemic, people probably would have kicked up more of a force of moving systems and saying that it was too integrated in the old system and now it's not the right time because we've got a certain start date, etc. Because we had the pandemic and our VLE was limited, people wanted to go over to Canvas because it had a few extra features around um, stuff you could do like in a seminar online and it was integrating with Teams and Zoom better. So the fact that we could do that staggered approach and get like sort of early adopters first, then move all the first year courses in 2020, then go for a full implementation in 2021, it worked quite well. I think in the project team, we were under pressure to deliver by September 2020, but um, Again, we had kickback from certain departments who didn't want to completely move everything out of the VLE, so we extended that for another year, which meant we were paying for Blackboard and Canvas at the same time, which was a bit of a pain. But yeah, even though it doesn't sound like it's quick for those that sort of span of years, I think we probably would maybe might have not even migrated <laughs> until now if it was uh, mm. still there. So yeah, a bit of a strange uh, culture at Liverpool, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, we might have time for one more question here, I think. Um, so I can sort of, I'm sort of looking, they've all got two likes, trying to decide which one you should go for. Um, I think if, looking at that top one, did you shortlist Canvas and Blackboard before engaging with the students? And if so, how did you come to the shortlist? That's quite an interesting question. So there was a process, um, the word has completely gone out of my mind of what you call it, but anyway, everyone got together in terms of, again, heads of schools and departments, um, senior leaders, and we had all the different suppliers come in and deliver a presentation mm. over a couple of days. Um, and then there was a list of questions 
that someone had designed. It might have been strategic change around different. So just came in actually first of all and did like a sort of VLE review in terms of what do you expect from a VLE, what makes a VLE good, etc. with staff. Mm-hmm. Then they designed this sort of questionnaire and we went through it. I can't remember no, the name no. of what you call it now, but anyway, we all went through it. We scored things based on we didn't get hands on with Canvas or Blackboard or any of the other suppliers. Um, then we shortlisted both Canvas and Blackboard and had the review from there. So Yeah, we weren't um, really engaged with that too much at that stage though. We were talking I mean, I only came on really around the VL evaluation stage at, at this point in time. I think I wasn't really part of the short. Yeah, there's a few of us. I think yeah. I did that survey. Um, Simon Thompson, who some of you might know, is in Leeds now. He was our head. Um, he did it as well. But for the life of me, I can't remember the name. I'm having a bit of a brain meltdown here, so I'll yeah. find, remember the name of what you call it. But yeah, that's uh, that, to me, sounds like an indication that it's lunchtime. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> But thank you. Thank you very much for thank your you. presentation. Thank you for your questions, I'm sure. Um, if people have got, would like to get in touch with you, then they can. No um, but yes, if we want to give you another round of applause and for our uh, previous presenters as well.